Hi everyone, Kate here with a summer TBR. I did think about doing monthly TBRs and I might even still do those actually. I think after this I will be filming a June TBR, but just to kind of have an idea of the grand, grand plans. I do have a list that's two times this length, but putting that full list up would really stress me out. It would have felt like a really big commitment. Um, I'm only going to talk about 11 books in this, um, although some of them kind of count for more than one. Anyhow, the first that I am really excited about this uh, project is I want to reread The Lunar Chronicles. Um, this is a science fiction, fantasy, fairy tale retelling series. And um, I am very picky about YA. I have tried um, throughout my time on booktube a lot of the popular YA books out there and I just DNF a lot so I don't talk about them. Um, but this is one that instantly I loved it. Um, and I think it gets better with each subsequent book. So I don't know if I will be doing the physical books or the audiobooks. I have here only three out of the four. And then there are two novellas. Uh, so there is Cinder, which is a retelling of Cinderella. And she is a cyborg and um, it's set in New Beijing. And there's a big overarching plot that happens within all of them. And then the second one in the book is Scarlet, and that is uh, based on Red Riding Hood. I really enjoyed this one, but once I got to Cress, which is Rapunzel, um, I really, really came to love this series. And then I think the order you're supposed to read it, the next one in uh, is Fairest, and that's a novella about Lavana, who is kind of the... Um, arch nemesis in the series. And then the final book is Winter and that is a retelling of Snow White. And then Stars Above is a short story collection that follows the characters after all of the adventures that they have gone through and it is just so action-packed and I love it. Um, so I'll either check out the physical copy of Winter from the library or listen to the audiobooks. I don't know but I'm really excited. It's been five years since I read this series and it's just I think Summer is a perfect time to have a really like um, kind of binge worthy series to get through. So looking forward to revisiting the Lunar Chronicles. And the next one that I want to do is The House on the Strand by Daphne du Maurier. Last year I read The King's General by Daphne du Maurier and I loved it so much. I think it actually might be my favorite book by her. I also love Rebecca and um, my cousin Rachel. And I have had several misses with her, but those are the ones that I've loved. And I listened to a little audiobook snippet of The House on the Strand, and it just sounds amazing. It is very much, I feel like, a book that inspired Susanna Kearsley with her time slip kind of thing. And I can't even remember uh, when our main character is supposed to time slip into, but it just sounds really intriguing. And um, I want to keep reading slowly but surely through Daphne du Maurier's catalog. And then one that I think will just be a really uh, lovely kind of whimsical treat are the Little House prequels. So the Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Years later in the 90s, people wrote prequel novels, um, some following what would have been, I think, Caroline Ingalls' grandmother in Scotland. And basically they're, they're just complete historical fiction they have, um, they kind of just figured out where family members were from and then they just wrote a plot based on it. But I think I've heard it's well-written historical fiction. Um, so I want to try one from that series, the one set in Scotland. And the first one is Little House in the Highlands. And then I want to try also, there is Caroline's Childhood and it is Little House in Brookfield. And then um, Little House on Rocky Ridge, which is Rose um, Almanzo and Laura's daughter, her kind of upbringing and childhood, which I assume that will be more kind of based on what happened in real life since they probably have a, a good documentation about Rose's life. Um, there is one other prequel series, but that one didn't quite intrigue me as much. So I want to try the three from those and I don't know what I'll do then. Maybe I'll just pick one to work on first or um, and then move on to the next series, or maybe I won't like them all. I'm not sure, but I want to try them. I never read them as a kid. I think I just didn't know about them, um, but I've heard they're just well-written historical fiction. Uh, the next thing that I want to read is Judith Lansdowne's uh, Just Impossible. This was a gift from my Morgan friend, um, and I love the sound of it. Uh, the Duke of Berwick 
um, and he is in Black Castle, his vast country house, um, and Shropshire, Shropshire, oh boy, this is a tongue twister, Shropshire is shrouded in snow, um, and Julia Delacroix ends up somehow happening upon his house. Julia Delacroix. I mean, how can he not marry her? Um, so I really could use um, a really fun, sweet romance, and this seems like just the thing. And then uh, I loved The Armorer's House um, by Rosemary Sutcliffe that I read in April. And I am going to try the other Rosemary Sutcliffe book that I have, Dawn Wind. Now, I do go into this with trepidation. I'm worried it will be a bit confusing with all of the historical details. It's set in, um, well, Owain is his name. It doesn't say when it's set. Um, the 12 years that follow Aqua Solis. So um, the last great battle uh, of the Saxon warriors. A time period I know next to nothing about, but a great historical fiction could be a good, you know, launching point for learning about that time period. Um, so I do hope I like it and it's very character driven. I'm hopeful because I like the Armorer's House, but I just don't know. So hopefully I will enjoy Dawn Wind. Um, and then I want a big sprawling biography to read over the course of the summer. This one is, I think it comes in just under a thousand pages. So it will be a bit of a task, but it sounds so good. And I've heard only wonderful things and it is Beatrix Potter, A Life. Um, and I, my, the two library systems I'm a part of both have copies of it. So I figure when I want run out of renewals at one system, then I can just check it out from the other one, along with pairing it with the audiobook, which I do have access to through Hoopla. It is uh, by Linda Lear and it just is a really comprehensive Beatrix Potter biography that is supposed to be wonderful. And everything I learn about Beatrix Potter makes me love her more. And watching the film Miss Potter earlier this year just made me feel I am drawn to her. And since she did love nature and wildlife so much, I feel like spring or summer seems like a wonderful time to read this. Hopefully I will love it. Um, then, I hauled this in my last book buying confession episode, Miss Reed's Early Days. This is a bind up of two um, memoirs, autobiographies about her early years. Um, one when she was living in, I think the city, yes, in South London. And then she moves to the Kent countryside in the second one. And it's just filled with all of these really endearing um, pen and ink illustrations. And I really love that they are throughout the entire book. So I'm really excited to get to this. I've just been loving reading Miss Reed this year um, and I want to know more about her and I hope I enjoy this. And then continuing on in the nonfiction vein, it was completely unintentional. I think I'm going to treat myself to A Fine Romance by Susan Branch. Uh, so for anyone out there that might not know about Susan Branch, she has three autobiography memoir style books. But what makes them so splendid that I would never want to listen to one on audio is because they are chock full of pictures and her really endearing drawings and illustrations. It's got, I mean, it's written in her beautiful handwriting and um, it has lots of quotes sprinkled throughout and it, they're just so easy on the eyes. I, I love reading them. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading this and it will make me long even more to go to England. So I do hope it doesn't make me kind of discontent that at this season of my life, I can't do that. Um, but hopefully in the future, at some point, I will go to England. And then um, following up uh, another one that uh, the Susan Branch, um, Martha's Vineyard, Isle of Dreams, just was a highlight of my reading year last year, along with um, the Sun in the Morning by MMK, which is the first of her three autobiographies. So A Golden Afternoon by MMK is the follow up. And this is the second one. And it's going to be kind of about her young adult years. Um, and I think she goes back to India. She had left India and was just devastated to have left. And uh, this will be going back um, 1927. And it, she makes her debut on the Delhi social scene. Uh, so she is back in India then. And um, it does always include some pictures. 
Of course, now that I say that, I'm having trouble finding them. Here we go. Oh my goodness, she was so beautiful. Look at this picture of her. I love that. Shit. That that to me right there looks like a, a leading lady in a Poirot mystery. Uh, so yes, really looking forward to this. And then I wanted to include at least one Victorian novel um, because some of them are so long that it feels a bit much to get through one in addition to several others during Victober. So I thought maybe I would have a leisurely reading experience through The Perpetual Curate by Margaret Oliphant. Uh, this is very much in the domestic uh, what domestic realism category of Victorian literature. And it is part of her Carlingford Chronicles series. And you're following um, this curate who apparently in the town that he lives in, half of the town thinks he's too low church, half of the town thinks he's too high church. And I think there are going to be some marriages and romance. Um, and um, yes, okay, Frank Wentworth is the curate. His love for Lucy Woodhouse is threatened by his lack of prosperity prospects. His evangelical aunts in charge of a family living disapprove of his high church ways and rumors about a pretty shop girl begin circulating. Slowly it dawns on Frank that he may well be doomed to a life of a perpetual of perpetual and single curacy. Uh, so I would love to spend a summer with Margaret Oliphant reading The Perpetual Curate. I have had some books by Margaret Oliphant that I have not enjoyed. I'm hoping this follows in this falls into the enjoy it category. That would just make my day um, because I love in theory, I, I want another wives and daughters basically. <laughs> That's what I'm always looking for um, with domestic realism in Victorian novels. Uh, so I will report back what I think of this. I don't know if I'll make it through in the summer because as you can see, I have some bigger books I want to get through. <sighs> it's okay. You just get to what you get to. I have to like calm myself down about not getting to everything. And then I just will mention also, I do want to continue my way through Green Dolphin Street. I kind of at first had aspirations to finish this in May, but the language is so rich and lush in this. And there's a lot for me to kind of internalize as I'm reading this that I don't want to rush this process. So there were several other Elizabeth Googe books I was hoping to get to, but I don't want to rush this at the expense of, I don't want to lose, you know, rush through this so I can read other ones and then realize I didn't really feel like it resonated with me. Um, so yes, taking my time with this um, because her books have so much packed into them and in, um, in each page. Uh, so I want to take in all of that. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my summer TBR. Um, and let me know if you have kind of your top books that you're hoping to read this summer. I'm, I'm very excited for summer reading. Um, I do talk about every year, though, that I kind of um, hit a reading slump once I get so focused on Victober. I'm hoping that won't happen this year because also I've thoroughly been enjoying reading mysteries this year. I'm really glad. Um, sometimes they just get kind of pushed to the side until Cloak and Dagger Christmas, but they've been happening regularly because I've just realized they are such I've realized all over again what wonderful palate cleansers they are as reading and usually one I can have it kind of on the back burner for a week and get through it without feeling like I tried hard or I can just binge it over two or three days and have fun reading it that way. They're just really great reading to fit in um, alongside other reading. So I'm hoping that if a reading slump hits um, that I could just have a blast going through several mysteries in a row. I'm not sure. Um, and if not, then it's okay if I read less later on in the year because I've been having a lot of fun with the reading that I have been doing. And I think it's just, I need to remind myself, it's not realistic to just expect your reading to be at the same pace all the time. So without further ado, I will leave you. And thank you as always for watching and have a lovely day. Bye.